These are leaders of different faiths that come and pray for peace. And all of this happens at the shrine of Don Bosco Matunda. His Eminence, Cardinal Oswald Gracious, was the main celebrant on the first day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear brother, the welcome rite we are about to celebrate by exposing the casket containing the rites of St. John Bosco for public revelation, gives glory to God in the first place, the source of all holiness. Let us prepare our hearts to understand the true meaning of this celebration. By offering the rites of St. John Bosco, the devout attention of the faithful, Holy Mother of the Church, which is to place before us the image of those who led by the Holy Spirit follow Jesus, in life and in death. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, and see forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from us. Let us pray, O God, source of all grace and holiness, look with love on your faithful, who have welcomed this reliquary of St. John Bosco, the friend and heir of Christ, faithful witness to the gospel. May we experience the effectiveness of his intercession at the throne of your glory. May it spread to Christ. Blows, but with patience and 
charity. You must make them your friend. But who are you and how can I do this? I am poor and ignorant. You can make it possible with my obedience and by acquiring knowledge. What? Who are you? I am the son of whom your mother has taught you to salute three times a day. Look, John. This is your field of action. so much that in her name you founded two foundations, the Shrine of Mary Help of Christians in Turin and a living monument, the Daughters of Mary Help of Christians. You said, I feel completely at home in your midst. I study, I work, I do everything for your welfare. You felt at home among your abandoned and poor boys. I am ready even to give my life for you. This is how you expressed your love and concern for the young. Now you have come in the company of the young in this great city of Mumbai. During one of his retreats, he said, from the time my mother taught me to join hands and pray, these hands have been clean. Well, my dear friends, that hand is here. That hand that blessed, that hand that absorbed, that hand that healed, that hand that wrote, that hand is here to bless us once again. We welcome you, Don Bosco. Welcome you in our midst. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Dear Father Michael, our provincial, dear Father Edwin, our rector over here, my dear fathers, Salesians in particular, my dear Salesian sisters, my dear fathers and sisters, and brothers and sisters in Jesus. For us, each one of us, today, this moment is a moment of grace because we have with us the relics of St. John Bosco. We have with us the casket containing the wax that gets through, but the very bones and the tissues of his right arm. 
For us it's a moment of grace because we haven't to visit him. He has visited our city. He has visited us coming to assure us that he continues to pray for us. Sisters and brothers in Jesus, my dear friends of Don Bosco, I was saying today is a moment of grace for us because we have with us the relics of Saint Don Bosco. Our own country, India, has got a very large population which is young. Over 50% of our population in the country is below 35 years of age. We must care for our young, beginning with the young in our home, in our homes. We must care for the young, confident that they are good, that the essence of his life. We find in the casket over there, Damini animas Give me souls, give me minds, give me persons, take away everything else. He wanted to make everybody disciples of Jesus. As he visits our city, and he also visits our homes and our hearts. As we pray to him, we ask him that the values he came to teach those boys, the young, he also imparts into our lives, your life and mine. That we are touched by his message, by his life, by his presence. That we to become also people who are dedicated, sensitive, caring for the young. That we to become like him, devoted to bearing our mother. Above all and everything, to become more and more disciples of Jesus, whom we follow, whose gospel we understand and make the center of our lives. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life.
This whole project was conceptualized four months ago when the team decided to produce the songs on the Mosco. With internet and the latest softwares in the audio industry, this whole project was thought of globally and produced locally. In a big way, thanks to the Salesian province of Mumbai, especially Father Michael Fernandez, the provincial, for his encouragement and constant support. Thanks to Reverend Father Peter Gonsalves, the executive producer for constantly guiding and checking for the quality in this album, and especially translating and adapting many of the Don Bosco songs. It's very professionally done, very catchy tunes, but also a very good message. May St. Dambosco enlighten our hearts. God bless you. And thanks to Joker and his team. Authorities in Rome for having obtained for all our people who venerate a plenary indulgence for those who venerate this, these relics. It's expected that when we venerate relics and for our indulgence to, to pray for the Holy Father's intentions. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. mention of the shrine of Don Bosco which is one of the most beautiful landmarks of the Archdiocese and a great grace to all the people. Earlier it was Father Marcio who was a great inspiration here and then his successors and today we have the gracious Father Edwin who is a director of the shrine always so helpful and kind to all of us who come here. Jesus we say There are two things in Don Bosco's educational method which are very basic and the first one is there is no real education possible without God. I intended to make young people good citizens here on earth. That's correct, good citizens on earth so that one day they will be worthy of heaven. Everybody knows that you want a good education, go to the church, convent schools. And Don Bosco's school is uh, one of the symbols, the epitome of education in Bombay. Everybody wants to come to Don Bosco School. Bless especially the Salesians as they may always be able to present to us a model of education and a model of love for youth. I really look forward to the, what is that Father Michael, I look forward to the Salesian parishes to be models of, of youth, of the care for youth. Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Lo stile salesiano è, è sempre simile, è sempre quello, ma è, è bella la partecipazione delle, delle persone. The Salesian style and the Salesian spirit is always more or less the same everywhere, but here the participation was very marked. E per noi è, è molto significativo esserci adesso con la reliquia di Don Bosco, anche se ce l'abbiamo vicino a casa, perché in questo momento per noi è, è molto, molto significativo. È molto significativo per noi essere qui in questo momento e oggi, quando la reliquia di Don Bosco è venuta qui, dove siamo vivendo molto vicino alla Basilica in Turin, e abbiamo Don Bosco qui con noi sempre, ma per vedere Don Bosco qui è stata un'esperienza totalmente diversa. Experience. Anche perché Don Bosco e i Salesiani ci hanno aiutato particolarmente nel suo caso. Also in, and especially because Don Bosco and the Salesians, because we belong to the association of the Amici di Don Bosco, friends of Don Bosco, for the, it's an adoption agency, and they helped us to get Mirabel. Viva Don Bosco! Viva Don Bosco! Viva Don Bosco. I imagine that Father Glenn is one of the first priests to donate his kidney to a fellow priest. And I worked in the missions of Africa for 20 long years. A couple of years ago, I was thrown this question at uh, a monthly recollection. And the question was this, at the end of our lives, we will not be judged on how right we were, we will be judged on how loving we were. And so the, at the end of our lives, the important question is, not whether I have done the right thing, but whether I have done the loving thing. And so, three years ago when I came to know that Father Lloyd Rodericks needed a kidney, uh, realizing that he had to undergo dialysis thrice a week, I came forward to donate my kidney. Uh, it's been a long journey. People have asked me this same question whether I was doing the right thing. Uh, I had changed my perspective of looking at life differently and so I no longer needed to answer that question whether I was doing the right thing. I was answering the question what was the loving thing to do and uh, because of that I came forward. I came forward to donate my kidney. My family at first found it a little difficult. Uh, I was brave and courageous and adventurous coming from Africa where I had seen a lot of pain and misery and death, saving lives was close to my heart. And so offering my kidney was, I think, the least and the smallest thing that I could have done in this journey of living my priesthood in a more radical way. Jesus himself would say at Mass, this is my body broken for you. At the end of our lives, we will not be judged on how right we were, we will be judged on how loving we were. Don Bosco inspire you and a call to all young people, the best way of living is loving because we can often give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. <laughs>
at Don Bosco's Matunga. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. St. Don Bosco, my dear brothers and sisters, who lived in the year 1815 to 1888, followed the same principle in his special mission with the workers and the youth. He followed the principle taught to him by his master, Jesus Christ. If Christ had paid attention to the weaknesses and failures of Simon Peter, Paul the persecutor of Christians, and Matthew the tax collector, we would never have had a Saint Peter, Saint Paul, and Saint Matthew. Pope John Paul II has acclaimed St. Don Bosco as the father and teacher of the youth. Precisely, he did this because of the education policy of St. Don Bosco is the basis of over 2,500 institutions for young people all over the world that are designed to enable the child to grow fully and freely into the kind of person he or she is meant to be. Saint Don Bosco called this system of education the preventive system in contrast to the repressive system that was practiced by many an educationist of his days creating fear in the child in order to achieve an objective. For Don Bosco, every child was a precious gift from God. For Don Bosco, every child therefore was a child, was a good child. In his institutions, he began to create a healthy, congenial and friendly atmosphere in order to bring out the best in every child through love and concern for the child. I now request His Grace to present a copy of the CD to Mr. Amon Daniels, who coordinated the project and is a chief sound recordist. On this happy occasion, ladies and gentlemen, with us we have Sean and Aldrika who represent the youth in India. Please come up, Sean and Alrika. I request His Grace to present a copy of the CD to each of these members. And 
may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. If we hold St. Don Bosco with so much of great affection and uh, greatness, it is precisely because of his closeness to Jesus and his Blessed Mother. Throughout his life, one thing that stood out was his loyalty and love for his Blessed Mother, for our Mother, and inspiration that he gave, example he gave by his closeness and unitedness with Jesus himself. We can be good ambassadors of Christ only by our example today. He says, by this shall men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. So let us imitate the great value that Don Bosco has given us and reflect Christ's presence in our life to all those who know him and who do not yet know him. God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But today we have a very special, a very special cause for joy. We celebrate the feed, the coming amongst us of one who was a great devotee of Bay. He has come himself to visit us today. That is the meaning of our relic that we have with us. A reminder that John Paul, that John Bosco himself is with us physically. We remember we realize how John Bosco indeed turned to Mary in everything he did. He called her, under the paper popular title, Mary, Help of All Christians. And if you go to the shrine, you will realize that the prominent, prominent place there is not for Don Bosco. The prominent place is for Mary, Help of All Christians. Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and abide with you forever. When we look at a tree, we admire the bark, we may like to sit under its shade, we may enjoy its fruit. But we know that the strength of the tree lies in its roots. And to the roots, the tree is always going back to draw its life-giving sap. 
I'd like to see something similar with the Salesians today. They go back to the roots in, in venerating John Bosco. We want to thank them for bringing him amongst us and we know that this visit will be a source of grace and blessing to many. God bless the Salesians and God bless all those who come here to venerate the relics. Thank you. Especially today, to our Catholics, to know that God is with us. God watch, watches over us and gives us the graces that we need to deepen our faith, to deepen our relationship with Him and to go ahead in living the Christian life, the message of Jesus. It is 68 years that I am in associated with Don Bosco. It was the first time, 1942, I came in this same building. And I have found nothing else but happiness. Among the missionaries that came from Europe, all my days I spent with them because we Indians were very few, especially here in Don Bosco. There were Britishers, Irish, even a German and one from Holland. But they treated us with so much love. They were always around us. They were not busy with anything else. Their focus was the youth whom they catered for. And we have learned values from them. That the youth is the hope of future. One way, Jesus. A special praise and worship for the youth was held at the shrine of Don Bosco, Matunga. I spent three hours by his side just talking to him. When I left home, we were seven children and I was working and studying. And when I told my mother I would like to join the convent, she said, just see what, what's left behind. Six children to look after. But then after a month that I left home, she wrote back to me and said, Don Bosco has stepped into our house. And Don Bosco remained there, just like he stepped into my life and he has never left it. Till today, I have a great trust in Don Bosco. And I've just completed 50 years of my religious life because Don Bosco has been with me. Don Bosco is the best. Don't worry, be happy, Don Bosco is with you all. Not many people can uh, travel right up to Turin to meet Don Bosco. Don Bosco is here himself. And I think it's just wonderful that people have taken advantage of this. What has touched me very honestly is the motto, no love, help one another and keep united. I think that's the biggest message which Don Bosco ever gave. Don Bosco is for the youth. And we at the alumni also say that we are of the school, by the school, to the school. Hi, my name is Farrell. I am an ex-boarder from Don Bosco's. I've studied here. Uh, I've grown up on these grounds. Uh, Don Bosco has been my father, my friend, my brother. And uh, he's taught me basically to enjoy life, to do whatever I can to the best of my abilities. Basically, Don Bosco for me, I heard about him. When he was young, he used to dream. And then he followed his dreams, lived up his dreams. So basically, I would love everyone to dream and live up to their dreams. Follow him, have faith in him 
and go on carry on i would like to tell the youth to you know follow whatever you believe in he did the impossible with his life he achieved a lot through mother mary so i guess i'm just saying like you know believe in yourselves take it forward and let god do the rest thank you don bosco for all that you have done for me we have a large school uh, that is not simply you know willing to sit on its laurels we have staff that are committed to the education of our children we are constantly looking for ways in which that we can make the whole education process something that is up to date and alive for our children we have uh, areas which are not just academic because don bosco clearly believe that there is more education taking place on uh, the playground than in a classroom and the character and the nature of a child is seen in a context that is out of academics is when don bosco said for you i live for you i work and for you i am ready to die i was a boarder in this very school at the age of 9 my biggest thrill was to be an altar boy in this shrine little did i realize that at that time that i would one day get ordained in the shrine and besides being ordained in the shrine become one day the rector of this shrine don bosco doesn't belong only to the catholics don bosco is universal don bosco belongs to the children of all the religions and all the faith the i think the best message that could give is the message that don bosco himself gave love jesus and mary love the eucharist The Mumbai police band was in attendance. A special Eucharistic celebration was held at Matunga with participants from all the Salesian schools in Mumbai. That is the hand that absolved people. That is the hand which wrote so many letters. 
That is the hand which people came and kissed. And we are really fortunate to have that hand here with us. I, the Lord, have spoken. They shall know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord God. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, says the Lord God. This is the word of the Lord. And how did Don Bosco work on himself? In the first place, he had a great, deeply Christian life at home, family life at home. And his mother, Margaret, taught him many wonderful things. But one thing which she taught him that always remained with him was those words, God sees you. My dear friends, saints are sinners who never stop trying. Saints are sinners who surrendered their lives to God and then God took over and ran their lives. When we entrust ourselves into the hands of God, God is able to do something marvelous out of whatever we have. He's able to fashion something beautiful for him, something beautiful for eternity. Don Bosco changed because he listened. He listened to the advice of his mother, his spiritual director, his friends. He listened and he acted on their advice. Very often when we listen, we may not act on the advice and then we don't change. Don Bosco had that will to change. And because he had that will to change, he changed. And he became a saint and therefore today people from all walks of life come to venerate him. All people glory in the good deeds that he has done. Through him who in in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father. Don Bosco, you came, you saw, you touched our hearts and conquered our spirits. You are known all over the world as father and teacher of youth, friend of youth, saint of youth. The father loves to visit his children wherever they are. A friend enjoys being in the company of his friends. As a father and a friend, you have visited your children, your friends. In a dream that you had, you found yourself in a vast plain with a large group of youngsters who shouted to you, at last you have come, we have been waiting for you so long. Now that you are with us, shoo, we shall not let you go. You came and we have been moved by your presence. You have blessed us and now it is time to say goodbye. But you will live in our hearts and minds. You are with us always watching from above. Just a few days before your death, you told Father Bonetti to inform your dear boys who could not come to meet you in your sick room. And this invitation very encouraging to all of us as it was to them then. I am waiting for you in heaven. Your coming and your presence are a reminder of, to us to think, to speak and to act like you and thus to get ready to be with you in eternity. When he sent your first badge of missionary South America in 1875, before they embarked on your ship, you surprised them by saying, I am coming with you. They were so delighted. You handed over the book of the Constitutions to their leader, Father Caliero, in a symbolic gesture of accompanying them to the missions. You are living with us in the Constitutions that we have. We have renewed our vows and pledged to live lives of renewed spirits. From the time you came here to Bombay on the 13th of August, Father Edwin has been reminding us that you are here 
it is time for us to celebrate. We did celebrate, but soon you'll be leaving us. The celebrations will carry on, but on another level, in our hearts, with a more enthusiastic and zealous spirit. Your pilgrim casket is going to 130 countries where your sons and daughters are present. We are fortunate that this pilgrim casket has been in our province for 13 days, from the 4th to the 16th of August. And today on your birthday, you are leaving us for Goa to carry on with the pilgrimage and let others have your blessings. Thank you for visiting our province and blessing us. We have heard of special favours that have been received through your intercession these 13 days that you are in our province. In each place you halted, thousands flocked to see you, to pray, to venerate you. In each of them you have etched your memory in their hearts and their minds. Much as we like to have you with us, we have to let you go. We have to share you with others, for you are a universal and a much loved saint. And without farewells, we are not able to have fresh beginnings. We thank you for coming, for all the blessings bestowed, and now say farewell, goodbye, and a million thanks. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. A fitting finale was given to the relic of Don Bosco. We begin a preparation for the bicentenary of his birth in 2015.